Starting out Season 9, we have a new cinematic with a huge announcement. Our journey has been arduous. Tiamat's reign has divided us, but no longer. But Lady Bologna... Have some faith, Merlin. They're gods. What if we're not ready? Then we'll fall united. My liege, be on your guard. The child and the daggers are no match for our gods! in this life and in the face of destruction you can despair alone or persevere together this is not a world built in your image no it is a better one Shiva is being added to Smite, and with that there will be a total of 6 new gods to come in 2022, and Hyrez released a teaser video for that, which I will show now. Travelers, worshippers, gods and goddesses, gaze into the night sky and to the stars within. Destruction. Creation. Beats of the same rhythm and all connected to Shiva, the destroyer. The flowers let loose their petals, carried on heaven-bound winds. Beyond the cerulean sky and among the clouds rests a majestic palace, and within, a throne of jade. For those of renown, for those that seek nothing before honor, for those that swear the oath, the knights await alongside a seat at the round table. A volley of arrows rain down from the heavens, arrows without oaths to keep, nor fates to weave, but for the battleground. Yet, like all things, war passes like the tides. The sun sets between sea and sky in a place of wave and isle. The sun will again rise, and so too will a hero. The end, much like our beginning, is a celebration. The journey in between calls for revelry, for it is what unites us. The stars with tales as endless as the night sky. What tales will they hold for you? Now I'm not too sure what the new gods are going to be, but if you have any ideas, feel free to leave a comment and let everybody else know. The Conquest map is going through some changes that will both involve the themes of Shiva and Tiamat. As Tiamat's reign fades from memory, so too do the tributes in her honor. Yet, as old gods fall, a new era rises. An era of destruction. An era of creation. An era of Shiva. There will also be new gameplay mechanics, as mentioned here. The biggest feature of Season 9 Conquest is the brand new Obelisk objective. The goal of the Obelisk is to bank away offerings found during a match 
or at new marked camps. When a team completely fills the obelisk with offerings, both teams will receive XP and gold based on their offerings. The team that completely fills their obelisk will receive a powerful reward, Indra's Scepter. The Scepter has two awesome modes. When enemies are nearby, they'll attack up to five enemies simultaneously. If no enemies are nearby, the Scepter will heal all nearby allies and structures. We're also introducing a new NPC, the Naga. Taking down this NPC will drop a bounty of tokens that you can use to fill your obelisk. Titanforge has also confirmed that adventures are coming back and they are creating a whole new experience. And now onto the big changes for Season 9 in terms of how Smite is going to be played. This year, we're introducing a new component to our item system that we are calling Glyphs. Five chosen items will now have a Glyph slot available, which will allow you to add additional passive effects to the items in your build. Like Calamitous Rod of Tahuti's Glyph, which calls down a Meteor when you successfully hit an enemy god. That's not all. We're also giving the Relic system a major overhaul, with all Relics getting two new Tier 3 upgrades. One which is more in line with the Relic's identity, and another one that adds something fresh. We also get a first look at Slash, which is a new game mode coming to Smite, and it's a combination of both Siege and Clash. Now, Slash is available to be played on PTS right now. And next up is the Season 9 patch notes, and I don't have enough time to go into everything in super detail, and I'll probably do a few other videos for that. However, feel free to look at the patch notes in the description if you want the full details on everything, but something new coming to Smite is the Relic system is getting overhauled. Each Relic will now have uh, Tier 3 for each Relic, and there will be a branching path, a more traditional one, and a new, a new different variant of it. For example, here's a look at one of the new Curse Donks. When you use the Curse Donk, it will apply to the enemy and it will drop a pool at their feet, which will damage them over time based on percent health. And not only that, but it will reapply Curse Donk. But uh, yeah, it's just pretty cool to see that the relics are going to be completely different. Also, the art for all current relics have been completely redone, as you can see here, and they look amazing. And now you can see that there's a tier 3 version for all the relics, and it's just absolutely incredible kind of brings back to how smite was season one season two relics used to have a tier three version there and that's amazing that they're bringing that back i'm very happy about this so they are changing the way that crits work in game now currently if you don't know crits are completely random and one part about that is that does not feel good as a player it feels wrong to have 50 percent crit and then miss six crits in a row so they're changing that to be pseudo random which is a controlled randomness, and this is very common in other video games, and overall, I think it's good design. Warrior's Axe is getting a slight power decrease. Bluestone is going to be 100 gold cheaper. Seer of the Jungle is being buffed in both protections, the amount of damage you deal to jungle monsters, and how long the ward lasts. Protector of the Jungle is having a slight power buff. Tainted Steel will now be 50 gold cheaper. Mystical Mail is having its damage nerfed slightly. The amount of shield you get from Pridwin is being nerfed. Bulwark of Hope's shield is also being nerfed. Telekines is being nerfed by having its power reduced. Voidstone is being buffed in terms of its health as well as the amount of protections it will reduce for enemies. Emperor's Armor is having its health buffed as well as the amount of attack speed it gives to allied structures. Jade Emperor's is having its health buffed but also the power that it reduces for enemies will be increased as well. I also can't help but wonder if Jade Emperor's crown is related to one of the new gods teased in the trailer. Blackthorn is being moved to the Heavy Hammer tree and its stats overall have been both buffed and nerfed in different ways but now it also has protections. Runeforge Hammer is also having its stats change a lot and as far as I'm aware these both have the same passives unless it's stated differently in the patch notes uh, description. 
Hide of Nemean will now have 90 physical protections, which is the most physical protection it's ever had as far as I'm aware. And it will also have a decreased time to gain a block stack from 15 seconds to 10 seconds for its passive. Berserker's Shield is getting a buff to its physical protections. Staff of Mirrodin is getting a buff to its power and also the duration of its passive. Celestial Legion Helm is getting a buff to its power, but it's also getting a nerf to its physical protections. Warlock's Staff is getting a buff in its power. Karen's Coin is getting its power buffed as well. Obsidian Shard is now going to be cheaper, and it's also getting its power increased from 90 to 100. Rage is getting 5 additional power. Failnaught is now 150 gold cheaper. Deathbringer is getting a buff to both its power and its critical strike chance, and it's also going to be cheaper. Shadow Steel Shuriken is having its attack speed buffed as well as the duration of its anti-heal. Now remember, items are going to have now a glyph upgrade that you can branch into, and because of that, Poison Star is being removed and it is going to be built into one of those glyphs for uh, the Shuriken tree. Adelana's bow is being completely changed in terms of stats. Its passive will be the same, but now it has power, attack speed, crit chance, and lifesteal. It no longer has penetration. Silver Branch Bow will now be 200 gold more expensive, however it will have 20% pen, which is huge. Devourer's Gauntlet is being buffed in terms of having less stacks but more power per stack, which means you can get to full power faster, and once you're at full stacks you will have 70 power compared to before which was 65. Toxic Blade is having a big buff by having its stacks increase to 3, which means if you hit 3 auto attacks onto an enemy god they will have 60% anti-heal. Hydra's Lament is more expensive, however, now it has 10% physical penetration. Golden Blade is having its power buffed, as well as its attack speed buffed. Soul Eater is having its physical power increased slightly. And Evolved Soul Eater is having a buff to both its power and its ability lifesteal. Blood Forge is now cheaper, but also gets 5% movement speed. And that is all the item changes for the patch, now on to the god changes. Atlas is receiving some huge buffs. He's getting some movement speed, he's getting some HP, he's getting some HP per level. They are also decreasing the size of the art for his passive. Not only that, but they're also buffing Atlas's first ability, Unburden. They're increasing the damage for it as well as increasing the slow for his first ability. They're also making it so that Atlas is knockback immune during his second ability, Gravity Well. So the final changes are to Atlas's third ability Kinetic Charge, and the first part is that now he can damage minions with them, and the second part is that they're changing the stacks from 3 to 2 in terms of being able to cleanse allies and then dump that onto an enemy god. And this is a buff because they're also making it so that even if you don't cleanse any allies you can apply one stack of a 25% slow onto an enemy god. So the maximum slow is still 75% and the ability is really weird. But if you understand how it works, it makes sense. If not, then just try it out in-game. Kamzots is having the healing from Devour decreased, as well as having his ultimate cooldown increased, and the damage from his ultimate sl is slightly lower now. Thankfully, Soul is being nerfed in terms of her 1 providing less heat for her passive, and her Disapparate now has a longer cooldown, and her movement speed is less on Disapparate as well. Bastet is being nerfed by having her second ability have less scaling, as well as her ultimate now has an audio cue when first casting it, and also it has an increased cooldown. Odin is having a recent buff completely reverted, so this is a nerf. Geb's shield scaling is being decreased, as well as the duration for his shield is being decreased. Amaterasu is having a recent nerf reverted, which means that now her second ability will deal more damage. Jormungandr is receiving some buffs. And first, in terms of movement speed, he's getting some base movement speed, and also his passive, he will not be punished as harshly for being displaced. His first ability is also being buffed by having an increased slow, and the tick damage is also being increased. Tyr's ultimate Lawbringer now has more damage. Baba is having a buff to her second ability, Baba's Brew, in terms of damage, and also her ultimate shouldn't root her anymore. Kernunos is receiving a buff for his Summer Stance in terms of damage, and also his Bramble Blast, now if you hit it directly on an enemy god, it will cripple them. Chernobog is having the damage for his passive increased, as well as his first ability now travels faster when deploying, and has increased range. Horus is having a buff for both his first and second ability for their damage. They're adjusting Kronos passive so that you receive the maximum amount of stacks at 37.5 minutes rather than 50 minutes. 
Nox is having the damage buffed for Shadow Lock when you hit minions. And last but not least, Isa is being buffed in three different ways. Her passive now has a larger radius, her wing gust is now cheaper for her mana cost, and Spirit Ball now does more damage. And there is one final god change with Apollo being remodeled. Now moving on to the skins for Season 9, we've got Grave Golem Geb, which will be the ranked reward for Season 9. Brought to life by a master we never knew, a body ancient Sepulchers, a spirit wandering eternally. Let's lay the enemy to rest. Next up we have Corroded Colossus Atlas. My body has been forged to withstand entire armies. Come, puny gods, let us see if you can mar my form. Then we have Space Scoundrel Danzaburo. Scavenging the outer solar system is just my side gig. Bounty hunting is what I was born to do. We also have a new battle pass called the Hellfire Syndicate Battle Pass. And in that, starting off, we have Crimson Kraken Poseidon. Come on now, I'm not going to let you have all the fun without me. Next, we have Miss Misery Nike. Running this business makes me realize that nothing can come between me and my family. Another skin in the battle pass is Death Punk Daji. And the last skin they're showing in the battle pass is Angel of Death Thanatos. Oh, nothing like a little jaunt around town to get the blood flowing. And a new event comes to smite called the Dharmic Era Event, and with the first skin being Honorable Hero Rama. Robin and his army shall pay. Next skin in the event is Prototype 2.0 Charybdis. M4W, are you ready? Good. So am I. And we've got a really cool Kukulkin skin called Bone Wraith Kukulkin. A fresh battlefield means fresh subjects. How shall I torment them all? And in the same event, we have Croaky Loki. I'm afraid to leave the pond, but I know there is adventure to be had out there. And that wraps up everything with Season 9 that they've shown, except for the Slash map, which I will be uploading a full Slash gameplay tomorrow if you want to check that out. And if you guys appreciate these types of videos where I edit down the patch notes because it takes a really long time, uh, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I do appreciate that. And thank you guys for watching, and I will see you guys next time. Bye, buddy.